Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Week 11 action in PMA LCS. We have yet another spicy matchup coming Welcome back to the Roundtable! I'm Osric Vox, and finally, versus finally! Oh, also known as you are losing a lane this week. On the casting crew tonight, we have me, Christopher Beats, the Thesis Packet on Play by Play, and we have Stuart Gaming Aaron on Color, that's correct, yes? Yes, sir! Right, yeah. And then everyone's... Everyone's favorite, everyone's favorite overlord. He yeah, even he even he even has his own church. It's Sean Menbug Shannon, manning the stream tonight. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right, how you guys feeling? How you guys feeling tonight? I'm feeling pretty good. I bought a lightsaber today, and that's really important. Dude, I hardly know her. Well, good job. <laughs> Wait, is that actually the sound it makes? Yo, yes, it is. That is actually the sound it makes. That's actually so cool. <sighs> and what's cool, what's cool about this? It's got a, it's got a classic lightsaber look, and I can change the color of it by hooking it up to my computer. Cool. Actually, insane. Can I get Link? To the, to the. Yeah. Oh, to pick that. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any there. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's even cooler than a lightsaber? More Some... exciting PMA LCS action, dude. I'm so excited. Me too. This is going to be an awesome game. Yeah, dude. So, uh, just looking at how these teams are matching up, what are you, what are you feeling like is going to happen this series? What, what do you think the move is? Uh, it's really it's really hard to say. Uh, we have some. Uh, I think both teams are really strong teams. Um, uh, some great players on both sides. Uh, 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 I can't never pr freaking pronounce this name. Akade. Akiute, I think. Akiute. Akiute. Everyone's gone with the cow, but I think it's Akiute. Yeah. yeah. Akiute in the top lane is a really strong. He beat the crap out of me when we played. Unlucky dude, but you know on that note we are actually gonna get right into pick ban here You all starting off with the Zin Zhao and Valkaz bans and Legends of Tap responding with the Kaisa ban Yeah, I'm afraid that I I, I don't know pick bans well enough to really make comments on on uh, how good a particular ban is for each team um, I, I can say that uh, you know uh, I've played both of these teams so I remember some us uh, considering some of these bands Velkaz is a really really strong um, control mage uh, with his knockups and that that ult that he can kill from afar so I'm not really surprised that he get, that he gets banned on someone who uh, who can use him yeah, and uh, the Zin Zhao and Velka is being lots of picks we've seen out of Legends on Tap, very consistent this entire year. Velka is actually being uh, Panic at the Top Hat's main champion, and Zin Zhao, at least on paper, is definitely Legends MK's main champion as well. And speaking of which, I would say that both of these chance, like both of these players, probably the two biggest standout players on the roster at the moment. And in addition to that, we have a, you know, Legends could easily be a possible MVP slash Rookie of the Split candidate available right now. So. <laughs> 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 they can hear you. <laughs> <Perfect>. Nice. <laughs> wow. All right, we have a first pick, Alistar. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Seems like we see it every single game. Yeah, anytime there's a Slaga in the game, or anytime there's a Euromoose in the game, Alistar is almost always a priority <laughs> pick. And uh, y'all gonna go ahead and snatch the Alistar away for themselves there. Uh, I like to I like to see the Tristana pick. Uh, I've seen her in a, in a bunch of games lately. Uh, she's one of those that if you if you can protect her, she is nasty. She's actually very annoying, very difficult to catch because the rocket jump resets. 
you basically get a rocket reset. You get a reset on rocket jump. Pretty much doing anything in lane right now. Kill the dude. Yeah, yeah, have a reset, I guess. Assisted on killing a dude, have a reset. Oh, look, you propped a max rank bomb with your auto attack, have a reset. It's not <laughs> easy. Everyone gets resets, dude. Like, you get a reset. And you I'm get a reset. It's designed to carry. <sighs> and, and like I said before, with protecting, uh, protecting her, we have Tarek, whose uh, CC is very strong. Uh, so I, I, I'm glad to see that synergy right there. Yeah, and Latarek actually going to be a rather interesting lane into the Alistar, and especially with that Ezreal pick, that Tarek's really not going to be under much kill pressure in that lane. Like, I think the Tristan on Latarek here on the side of Legends on Sap is going to be very strong going forward into this match. And we see the LeBlanc pick actually coming out right now. Probably going to be put, probably going to be given to C-Van. Uh, yeah, probably. I know that he plays a lot of LeBlanc in solo queue. He has played a lot of LeBlanc in the past. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if he's been priority. I'm not necessarily sure if he's been prioritizing the Kogma and Extreme. I mean, let me rephrase. I'm not sure he's been prioritizing the LeBlanc and Extreme amount recently. He's deviated more towards the Kogma and other options, and especially being flexed around as an AD carry, and also using Victor in the mid lane. A lot sure. of PMA LCS recently, but the LeBlanc is just a classic pick that we're seeing coming out, and we really don't think, I think the reasoning behind the blind pick LeBlanc there is, really don't think Panic at the top hat has anything in their pool that can stop it, and especially and, if you to throw a Vagar ban their way in the second rotation, that would be extremely good. Uh, another thing with the combination of the LeBlanc and the Ezreal, both of those champions are very hard to pin down, and so when you have those two plus the Alistar knocking people away, I could really see that being a strong little combo where they just can't be caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ezreal and LeBlanc, very two, like, two very mobile... <laughs> oh, pardon me. Two very mobile champions on the side of y'all here, really giving them a lot of ability to play these team fights kind of how they want to, and you know, take small skirmishes here and there, poke people down, assassinate people, maybe not necessarily the brute force, run it in and run it down type of team comp, but definitely something that will be interesting to watch. And the Jax pick as well coming out for Legends on tap it is a pretty good flex between mid, uh, top and jungle. We've usually seen Legends of K on this pick a lot, and I haven't seen a count on that pick a lot. That being, split, that being but, said, we've got an Ivern Hovered, and uh, if it, uh, that if it's disgusting, that comp is disgusting. We have he yeah, and there it's locked in. Uh, so we know that Jax is going to go, probably going to go top. The Ivern is going to go jungle, and uh, they have just a ton of CC. Let's play the Protect Tristana game here. Yeah. And it's an easy buff Tristana comp to make, but at the same time, you have that Jax with the split push pressure and also being a secondary carry in the fights. And in combination with Tarek, that's just enough frontline to make y'all's life extremely difficult because there's not really a clear weakness they can pick on in the team fight phase in the late game. And also with the Jax, Account has actually been, you know, playing Jax a decent amount towards the end of the split, so. I would go out on a limb and say that Akao was specifically like asked to, was asked to learn that Jack, so that way they have it as a flex pick. That being said, we have, see the Riven and Sejuani. You know, I actually really uh, Sejuani's hovered and and picked by y'all. I actually really like those two picks. Riven is if you let her, she could she just could basically one v nine, and with the Sejuani Alistar combo to protect everyone else, I think we're going to see two very strong team comps here tonight. And oh, that's disgusting. Uh, looks like that's going to be, yeah, looks like that's going to be a Nautilus mid for Panic at the top hat here. Having a shield, having a lot of survivability into that walk lane. Just looking at this draft, I feel like Legends on Tap really planned it out nicely the, and has answers for what y'all tries to do. The only so, thing... Go on. But the only thing I'm worried about is their damage. I think their damage will be... Yeah, well, Mid game, their damage is going to be questionable, but uh, especially late game, uh, Nautilus actually has a fair amount of burst, and 
You can just throw it, you know, you can just throw an ult down on Ezreal, LeBlanc, or Ribbon, any of the squishy targets on the side of y'all, really, and it's probably going to be a free kill in the team fight phase, and especially once you hit late game with Tristana powers on, the Jax powers on, and you have a full AP Nautilus that's going to blow people up, and which, by the way, AP Nautilus is actually really strong on this patch, it's seen a decent amount of play in the mid lane, and can actually be flexed to four different roles with varying degrees of effectiveness. We've seen a Nautilus jungle come out for Kaligma Bobway in the PMA LCS. Um, I don't think we've seen Nautilus... Oh, we saw a Nautilus support yesterday as well from Beowulf, and now we're going to see the I, Nautilus mid today from Panic on Top Hat. I don't know, I've seen Nautilus uh, support from... Um, what's his name now? Hey, listen, we've seen Nautilus support from Hey, listen, oh, a yeah. couple of times. Uh, he did really well with that, and uh, as you know, as a top player, I can definitely say that Nautilus top is 100% viable. Mm -hmm. It really is, and uh, I actually really like the bands though. Vagar, I'm very much a fan of the Vagar band coming in from uh, y'all. I'm not actually a fan of the Euroian Soul band though. I have no idea if Fanic the top hat actually plays that pick, but Aurelian really doesn't do that well in the LeBlanc lanes. LeBlanc just runs him down before he gets lane uh, I, I have to say, I saw the Aurelian Soul ban and I was like, wait, is Flesh playing right now? Yeah, I don't think they played... <laughs> yeah, they stopped beating? I don't know. I feel like they've only been two different... I feel like they've only uh, been two different people who played Aurelian Soul. Uh, I have to... LCS. There's, there's no, no Nivea bans, so I'm, I'm, you know, the fact that someone didn't play Nivea is really disappointing to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes. <laughs> and we, we're getting into this uh, team selects right now, so it's time for more formal analysis. Looking at both of these comps, who do you think has gained the compositional advantage coming out of this drafting phase? Uh, I, I have to agree with you. I'm gonna say I'm gonna throw it on the side of Lot. I think they just have so much front line. They have so much tankiness that I'm gonna find it difficult um, to see late game uh, y'all being able to push through that. Now that being said, with the LeBlanc, with the Riven especially, those are ones that can at the beginning of the game outplay their their opponents and uh, um, start rolling the game in their favor. And if they do that, then Lot may have some trouble coming back from that. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see if these playmakers on the side of y'all can have an impact throughout the mid game because once the Ezreal comes online with this double item power spike, you know, LeBlanc gets that loot in, manages to get a decent amount of lane control and just roams somewhere. And and with the outplay potential coming from the Riven in top lane, I will say though about the Riven, Jax is actually kind of a scary matchup for that Riven because a lot of Riven's burst actually relies on the auto attacks because of Riven's passive, which uh, stacks up to three times, which stacks like spell blades up to three times, and basically every time you auto attack with them, it expends a every time you auto attack, it will expend one of those charges that you gain from using a spell and it'll do extra damage on the auto. And so, much more of Ribbon's damage actually comes from auto attacks than you think it does. That being said, the win if, if, if she is careful, and she's good, and, and uh, she allows um, Jax to use his dodge, I forget what it's called. Um, Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, he allows, use, allows Jax to use his Counter-Strike, and it goes down. Uh, Riven has a very decently sized window to put out some real heavy damage on Jax, and there's very little Jax can do about it. Yeah, Riven definitely having a very large cooldown advantage in that matchup, though. Broken Wings usually clocking at, like, 11 seconds level 1, I think, something like that. The Key Burst as well, her W should be around 12 seconds, something like that. And her Valor, I think that's what it's called, her E is around 8 seconds, I believe. <laughs> it, Jax typically has, like, a 19 second, 20 second cooldown on the Counter Strike mm -hmm. level 1. It's extremely long. It's definitely not comparable to any of Ruben's abilities. The Empower, though, like 4 seconds, I think, level 1, and the Leap Strikes, like 6, 7. It, it's 8 level 1. It's actually, yeah, it's 8, but like, anyway, the gist is Riven has a lot of opportunities to trade because Jax only wins trades when this counter strikes up, especially against early lane dominance like Riven, so. Playing around that extremely high cooldown will give Riven an opportunity to actually do some damage in that lane.
Oh Jesus. The audience should know that Menbung just said ooh woo. Yeah, it's been confirmed. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so you know we've going into this game one. Which team do you think is actually gonna win? Let's hear your predictions. Um, although I like the team comp better on a lot, I think that. I don't know, I just have this feeling. I feel like y'all's gonna pull it out. That's spicy. I like it. That is, that is the spiciest thing I've ever heard in my life. Confirmed. <laughs> Profit gain win. Profit gain win here, boys. I wish this <laughs> to be made with Nostradamus, but there's really not. There's not. So what's Ga Gan Ganstradamus. Ganstradamus. <laughs> No Stra Wiener. <laughs> no Stra No Stra Wiener. <laughs> so bad. I think <laughs> no Stra Wiener, I hardly know her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, I wish you guys could hear the groans coming out of Sean's mic right now. It's beautiful. Oh man. <laughs> ooh ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Menbung, Menbung is moaning like a whore right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on, that's actually gonna be censored, bro. That, uh, cut the video. Here we start. Really? A Menbung minute. Do we really have to restart the stream? No. <laughs> God, we do not have to restart the stream. We have to restart the stream. <sighs> on the bright side, though. You know, I gotta give it the Legends on Tap this game, though. I will say. I, I like the comp. Legends on Tap, it's the easy lock in. You'll look at the stats, you'll look at the comp. All are in their favor. I wanna believe in I wanna believe in the magic of you are losing lane. I really do, but I I just think you are losing lanes. Uh, probably gonna lose lane this game. <laughs> oh, there is to it. Now, welcome, chat, to our special edition of the Menbung Minute. Hey guys, Menbung here. So, looking at both these comps, I think if you want to give the early pressure to anybody, it's going to be the pushing lanes in bot lane and mid lane should have some push, but the kill potential will be on the side of Innovok on this LeBlanc. Top lane is really where you need to be focused because with the okay. likes of Ivern right there, going to be able to take some of these jungle camps and clear it really, really effectively. Uh, if it gets to the mid game and Tristana is even with Zara Rudo right there on the Ezreal, you got to give it to Tristana with the double shields and heals coming out from Ivern and the Taric. Uh, when you have this Nautilus Light right here, he will be building the AP because that is what uh, Panic at the Top Hat will do to try to get some of these kills and everything. So he has been boosted by Legends of K to Plat. So to see if we can make that happen here on the main stage, that's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to give this game probably to Legends on Tap right there taking the first game. And that has been your Ben Mug Minute. All right, you heard it here, boys. Uh, that is the Men Bug Minute, Spencer, sponsored by the Church of Bungpalia. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note we're gonna get right into this lovely loading screen here loading <laughs> screen all right let's do some uh oh wow that was fast yeah i'm not in either i'm not anywhere close to in <laughs> Holy mother! What if what if Gan Wien's still like chilling on the loading screen and it's just like like that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! We're past ten. Oh yeah, and uh, also another point, fair point been brought up. 
by the love of me, Men, men Bug. There are, in fact, seven members of council currently in this game right now. And five of them are on the same team. Eight. Seems to be all of lot. Are, uh, I know that uh, Menbong is council and I'm council. Are you council? Uh, I am actually united. Well, uh, in that case, so there's two more. So it's really it's nine people in this. Are. Uh, Ooh, dude. Ooh. <laughs> uh, you know what really surprise you really you know what really surprises me though is uh fast forward alive. Uh but fourteen right now I believe. I am also fourteen. I have a 14 as well. And they're starting back up again. Yep, blows my mind. We didn't pause before because Lan DC. Yeah, we didn't pause because Slag Slash had DC. We just paused because he was in the bathroom. Oh god. Maybe he's. What if he gets stuck in the bathroom for like a super long time, bro? Do we text him and ask if his PP DC'd? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Asking for a friend. He just wanted to be sure. ED is a very serious disease, and here we see an early invade coming out of Legends on tap, though. Y'all can scout that one out real quick, but the stun from Yoruba is coming in. Barco Knight not going to take very low, flashing over the wall and getting out of that one. With the, the spot skin of his... Thor? Uh, Thor? I, I gotta say, it looks to me as if there was a little bit of AFK from that they were stacked up in that bush but there was a delayed reaction they did not see them walk up that's very true they kind of just watched them walk in there and just chilled and they let it happen and they did you know, you're the Terex stun servants drops the bomb on his head you know that entire sequence of events plays out and yeah i don't wonder what was going on i don't know maybe it's someone still in the bathroom you know what was churning in the old noggins Looks and now they've got a now they've got a couple of wars and are able to, are going to much more easily track that jump. This will be a fun time, dude. And probably going to confirm the Park of Night Night be starting up at that red buff. And also, one thing to be interesting is, like, Ivern has very, you know, unpredictable pathing. There's the fact that he can mark his camps and then they just walk on some places. But one of the fortunate things for y'all is the fact that, you know, because Ivern actually has to mark camps, that means he can't really just clear his... You can't just get a buff leash and then just walk into your lane level 2 and gank you. Which is very convenient to not have to deal with. And I'm very excited to see how this Ivern pass plays out with this early game here. See some early action going on in this bot lane. Slug Slash can be brought down to about half health by that Tastana Bomb from Sir Everest here. That bomb is a great early damage dealer. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it's, it's something that uh, the... Well, then I thought we got some early action going down in the mid lane. Panic from top hat brought extremely low by Steven LeBlanc. Flash going to come out, but not going to be enough. Panic from top hat can flash away and escape that. Even without the uh, the uh, ignite, um, so he's clearly all ending for the kill. Um, it was a very big trade on the side of LeBlanc. Yeah, and expect LeBlanc to be having a bit of early advantage into that lane. And in addition, having a huge wave. And actually, going to go all in, get the first blood on on uh, Pan the top hat. The top lane, though, with Cow Force, the Iron Hit for it, Renews Ribbon, and Iron Force, flashing out a tower, and to get that kill. It's a quick two kills for y'all. Let's see some K, though. Caught out on the jungle. Bark from 9 9, going in. Slug Slash, a flash over the wall, and slapping him up. That Iron Shield can come out. Not going to be enough, though. Bark from 9 9, going to secure that kill with the. Well, that's a quick three kills, y'all, in this early game. And, and on the parts, the side of uh, mid and top, it, it is exactly as I predicted. That's exactly what y'all needs to do if they want to have even a chance of winning this game. Is getting that early pressure going, 
getting those early kills on LeBlanc and Riven so that they are super hard to kill later in the game. Yeah, and on getting that Riven split push pressure against the Jax is going to be key into this mid-game transition on the side of y'all here. So I am excited to see if this Riven can push this advantage forward and become a dominating force that we're expecting to see. Also, one thing to point out in that top side of his account, not doing his due diligence, respecting the minion wave, and that leading to him losing his trade poorly. Meanwhile, I'll admit though, Seaman getting traded on by the panic of the top hat in the middle of a wave, and here comes Spark 199 for the side there. The gang is going down, Chokes might drop, panic the top hat brought down to about half, going to run out through the wave. Dredge line comes out on the Seaman, it's just not going to be enough though. Kill going into Spark 199. Great gank from. Great gank, Tejuani. Yeah, Barkman 99 is just all over the map right now, actually. Something crazy. Uh, you can see that uh, Riven has already picked up her phage. That's going to be really great for her um, in getting that movement speed advantage against the Jax in trades and in escaping him when he uh, pops his counter strike. Yeah, and I think not respecting minion weights has been a general theme of this game here, as especially Iron Four Noob trading into account after he gets back to the lane into account minion wave, and also in that mid lane, C Van kind of like dropping the hammer on panic into the minion wave. So I think it's safe to say that mo none of these players really care about the position of the minion wave at all this game. So expect that to become a rather large factor in seeing who has lane dominance. Right, for a noob though, he's got the level 6, he's dropping the all in. Counter Strike coming out from a cap on Legends of K is here on the top side to answer. Iron for a noob brought extremely low, account looking for this kill. Wind Slash coming out from for a noob. Not gonna be enough though, the stun! Oh! He's gonna get taken down by a cow, just not gonna be enough. Wow, that being said, Ruben got awfully close to taking them both down at the same time. I feel like if he just played it more patiently and waited for the Wind Slash in order to get the boosted damage at lower health, he probably would have actually been able to turn that. So, like, honestly, probably just a bit of the Panic Wind Slash coming up there, and especially because that Grandmaster's might have count on cooldown, giving them a rather rough time of actually sustaining through that fight. Meanwhile, there's Slug Slash and Zawired are getting traded on, but Sir Everett's flashing out immediately Bark with 99 Slash 1 here on the gank pad. Like coming out, your move's also gonna flash out, and the Terex Sun coming for the turn, gonna go wide though. Saw Warrido brought extremely low, Sir Everett's looking. Saw Warrido gonna arcade shift out though, gonna be fine. I'm gonna point out on back on Riven is Riven died, she did not have flash because she used yeah, it earlier to hear those kills. Down, never mind, we're safe. Rocket jump's good. Uh, anyway, Riven did use her flash on her initial kill, um, so she did not have that to escape uh, when she was ganked by that um, Ivor. Yeah, by the tree man. By uh, Mr. Ent. So you know, I, I have a uh, I have a philosophical question for you. Not necessarily a philosophical question. It's just a it's just it's your numbers question. How much in grams, how much weed do you think Ivern smokes every day? Um, in grams? In grams. I have no idea. Uh, on to both of those questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably about 420 if you ask me. <laughs> I, I don't smoke, so I honestly don't even know what a, I don't even know what a gram of weed looks like. <laughs> I mean, I assume it's green, and there's a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> you think I'm sitting. <laughs> oh, God. So, Menbug Men just said, I can't stand you right now, and if I taught us his response was, good thing I'm sitting. <laughs> You're gonna make this Rage quit before the end of this game. This is not good. <laughs> worthy goal, sir. A worthy you guys goal. See the stream go black. You know who did it. <laughs> <laughs> not much. Not much. Some training going on, but not really a whole lot of real action happening right now. Hey, top hat brought kind of low by that damage coming in from C Van and. Yeah, that Nautilus having some issues with this land with the LeBlanc, but we see some action in the bot lane here. Legends of K coming in from the gang, so Slux 
flash up probably the unbreakable whale gonna be cc'd up and that's right i'm sorry bot wing hiding out of here probably going to be fine yes they are and daisy just chilling in front getting a wall up here and she's gonna walk out that is one sad sad tree uh, you know, I gotta say, Slagger slash, slash are looking a lot like Slagger in the play right there. Oh baby, gonna be hot and cool like Slagger slash it. But meanwhile, more action, Slagger slash actually flashing out, of course on. And here comes Tarek, oh, coming down there looking for this turn. Kill going here with Sir Everett's on Slagger slash it. Back with 9-9, well, I could get to be the next to flop. Oh, Rocket Tarek coming up with Sir Everett's, great! Buster shot, stop C-Man, distortion in. Gonna be missing out on so much LeBlanc damage after that. Ooh. A little spicy fight. Some trade. We had a uh, one for nothing on the side of uh, Lot. We were able to pick up a kill without uh, taking any any real harm. Um, but that being said, uh, I you know there were some elements there that uh, y'all you know could have played better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, y'all could have played better. Play better, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're like the high school football coach going there. Play better, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, you, need, you need to get good, man. You need to get good, bro. <laughs> you need to get good. You go out there and play some football. That's what you got to do. Uh, man, man, top hat getting traded off. Chains from C Man coming in doing some damage. Legends of K though. In the mid lane, didn't share that safe escape. So, you know, I got, uh, got another question for you. Alright. Um, your Taco Bell. Oh, that's tough. I like both. Oh, um, KFC tastes better. But Taco Bell surprisingly has a healthier menu. Taco Bell has a healthier. Yeah, it is the uh, out of out of drive-through fast food options. Taco Bell is uh, has the healthiest menu in the business. You know, I was expecting like a meme-worthy answer, but like that's actually surprisingly informative. I did not know that. Ever panic the top hat, drop a dredge line, C Van mid lane, and depth charge, C Van first now flashing over the wall. Glacial Glacial Prison coming in with Barco 99 and Legends just didn't share that safe escape with C Van there. You have to give you have to give credit to both teams right now. Um, they are both making some excellent engages and plays, um, but on the same side, escaping from those as well. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, man, Top Hat actually probably gonna be caught out a bit in this mid on this, uh, bot side river. Actually, he's gonna walk away, never mind. And Slaga Slasha, it's an angry cow. He's got mad cow disease. He's going aggressive on Sir Everett's in this bot lane. <laughs> I can hear the groans again from Ben, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Looking at the, looking at the gold, um, oh, Ooh, and actually the late flash from Sir Everett's there, but so hard to actually gonna flash out in the end. Slash like Slash going in, three shot barrage coming down, not gonna be enough though. Sir Everett's popping the heel, Buster shot backwards on the Slash and Slash. Let's get out of that. Went back one nine nine. He fancies the re-engage on the set one. He has one beat before he's going in. I have brought extremely low. So hard with the snipe on the edge. Nearly not enough though, and Cosmic Radiance coming down, and your moves gonna be poised to back out. Finally, though, and it is a zero for zero. However, Iron Four Noob is extremely low in the top lane account, gonna dive him under tower with that leaping strike and finish the kill off. Devan forced to run for the hills and go back to that mid lane. Great gank from uh Pack the Top Hat. It is not what's rooms are tuning up. <laughs> If you, if Lot keeps playing like this, ooh, that threat line is so good. Hold on, and uh, actually big damage coming in. Up a bunch of some K in this mid lane to help save him with that Ivor and shield. It, it seems that every time that C Van engages, uh, Legends is there to protect the Nautilus. Uh, so really, kind of big brain uh, movements from Ivor. Jesus. So you know you have to admire uh, you have to admire Barkman 99 for for uh, his ganking, but 
That being said, Legend's kind of having the quiet, low-key, very effective game over here. 87 CS right now, 32 CS up on Barco 99, having a great game from a pathing standpoint, and he always seems to be in the right place when he's needed, just protecting laners and helping them survive and transition into this late game so their sailing comp can help take over. Right. And it, it uh... However, that being said, oh! It's raiding going on in the top lane, though, and a cam Oh, I back in! Oh, baby! All in coming up from Iron Point, Noob, and the initial person coming from Barco 99. The Legends of K is here to answer, and Barco 99 taking extremely low. Cal coming under the tower. We will shut down, getting the double kill on Iron Point, Noob, and Barco 99. That is Cal on this Jax in the top lane. That is one scary Jax right now, sitting at 4 and 1. He's got a completed Trinity for us, gonna get this. Clear off this first tier top lane turret as well. This is not what you want to see on if you are y'all right now. So at this point, I think that the window that Riven had uh, to, to really be oppressive towards the Jax is probably pretty much gone. Yeah, so they had a window created in the early game, but then they kind of threw it a little bit. And actually, it's already right going to get stunned off by the Taric by the Taric E in bot lane. So everyone's going to finalize the kill with the Buster shit. And that's going to be a solo kill for the bot lane duo of Legends on tap. This is looking very scary for y'all. Yeah, and this Nautilus, oh my god, and... Tap charge coming out, actually not gonna do that much damage. Just gonna back off of that one. T Man, yeah, T Man's gonna have a rough time in this lane. Nautilus has the. Nautilus has, the sh has his Riptide max, and he's getting points in the shield, and even at the plot, right about the blow through the minion waves as well. So, it's gonna be rough. And Sejuani slapping this gigantic Anchorman around here. Nautilus looking like Will Ferrell, though. He is the Anchorman right here. Barco 99 taking extremely low. Oh. Nine Legends of K gonna finish that kill. That oh, is just boy. painful. That was one naughty boy. We are seeing the tides turn very quickly for the favor of Lot. I'll say, you know, Panic the Top Hat perhaps having some issues in this mid in this early game playing this Nautilus, but transitioning very effectively into this mid game and having his news team assemble as fast as humanly possible. Legends MK been showing up in this mid lane and providing so much assistance to this naughty boy. times uh if you're looking at look at the items i i, I love what analysis is building a little bit of uh, uh health and those mercury trends are going to help him a lot for survivability to getting into that late game where he can do some real damage yeah and the proto belt is the new standard thing that we see coming out of Pinky nautilus mid but hold on legends of k actually caught in a rough spot at this dragon though but there's so many heals cosmic radiance coming down sir everett's is taking out slug of slasha and bark with nine nine sh to follow shortly kill going over to legends of k this is painful to watch it's pretty disgusting and meanwhile iron for new getting traded on by beefy boy jacks in the top lane <laughs> So what wow. What do you do against that? Like, Jax doesn't uh, do that. You, I don't know. Oh, wow, he does. You're right. And this is going to be a one scary at Jax. Sitting four and one here with the Trinity Boys and showing on the Rift Herald that was soloed earlier with all that bot lane action as well. And Legends on Tap also taking down this tier one bot lane turret. And. Uh the combination of the Tarek stun and the uh, uh, Tristana jump is. Also disgusting. Yeah, that's working very nicely. That's fantastic. I never even considered it as a uh, stun delivery system. <laughs> and uh, y'all's window to make this game, to make something happen in this game, is like closing very rapidly. It, I, 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 I dare say it's, it's gone. On the bot side, Junka Seaman brought extremely low. Dump Terror is coming out here. Micro 99 going golden mode. And Seaman can be taken down on left side. Sir Everett is on a rampage. Popping off on the Tristano. Looking for the Goomba song. With Zalwardo answering back on the Legends of K here. Big Top Hat taking the three of them. Sir Everett kills. Finishes that. Micro 99 down on the right side. And now the three shot barrage with the teleport in from. Actually. Straight up rotation from Iron Four. New flash coming oh. in. Sir Everett's running extremely low. Now Star Combo going down. But here comes a count here. What the save? Sir Everett's now just going to walk back into his death. 
A cat doing his best to clean up in the 1v3 round. Extremely low here. Gonna be knocked up and shut down. Go go. Fantastic teleport from Iron 4 Noob, and you know what? I dare say they might be back in the game. Yeah, let's talk about that window closing, but Legends on Tap kind of playing a rather sloppy fight there, and doing a lot of honestly really sketchy things. And, you know, Akal was there to clean up at the end, but the issue is his entire team was already dead, and he just didn't have the damage. He wasn't a bad enough jack at this point to close that out. And so now y'all just spent a window back into this game. They closed the CS lead. They closed the gold lead about 2,000. Uh, I, I almost want to go back and watch and see what the time difference is on the teleports from Iron 4 Noob and Aka uh, Akade. Yeah, I don't think either of them were... Like, none of the teleports were used that fight. Like, they all just kind of walked there, honestly. Oh. Yeah, because Iron 4 Noob's teleport just came up. Akade's teleport's about to come up, so... You're right. Just rotations. Wow. 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 How many memes we've got? We got Will Ferrell memes. We have Owen Wilson memes coming. Like, well, they're always together. That is true. No, wait, no, 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 no. That that's Owen Wilson and uh, um, um, what's it? No, it's not Vince Vaughn. <laughs> no, it's uh the other Jew. Um. <laughs> Whoa. I'm allowed to say that. Meanwhile, the Slug Slash can be taken down extremely low. Kill going over Legends MK over here. It's a fall on Brawl Map Charts coming out from Panic Top Hat. Iron Fort Noob gonna run it so the Riven Legs fast enough away. But Hulk coming out. Got the Grady's go down. Iron Fort Noob gonna get mowed down by the Death Ball. And Z Man is now caught on the side over here on this little block. Double kill going over. Account whacking him with that hockey stick. Looking like the Mighty Ducks over here. That was the very definition of caught, if I've ever seen it. Yeah, that's why they can call him a caught, except <laughs> getting caught. But it was Panic at the Top Hat that really got that, that choice hook off for uh, to start that fight to start the fight off. That is true. I just wanted the pun. <laughs> it's more of a pun, it's more of a pun for the fisherman uh, to have caught the. Uh... This isn't a fisherman. This is a hockey player. I'm talking oh, about Nautilus. Oh, okay. That's right. Right, right through that. Com right, what was that Comedy Central video? Too many hooks, I think. Too many. Too many. Yeah, it was too many. Definitely, definitely not too many hooks. Too many hooks. Too many hooks. Too many hooks. So is that what we're gonna call this uh, this game? Too many hooks. Too many hooks. Yeah, but he could use it more than one time. There may have been only one hook in this game, but he's been throwing a lot of them, and they've been very effective. So, you know what? Too many hooks. Too many hooks. Oh, oh, oh. Men bun getting threatening here. We're gonna have to call the cops. Yeah, cut the, cut the video. Cut the bun. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually massive damage for that true shot for us. Oh my god. Michael Knight and I going in for that dragon. Not gonna get. You get mobbed down here by Lance. Oh. Yeah. I would have just. Slugger Slash to actually slapping down that mid turret. Run as fast as his little cow legs to get him out of there. And I for Noob actually getting a turret on the top side as well. Well, that's going down. So, you know, it's actually one of the things I've seen in a decent amount of games from y'all is their cross map play. They always seem to get a decent amount of turrets out whenever people push as five. So, y'all have been one of the teams that's actually. Enjoyed 1 3 1 and split push pressure a lot more throughout the PMA LCS split. And it'll be very important to see how that materializes here because some of the gold advantages they just got there would be crucial in keeping them in this game. That being said, if if Lot is Lot's team comp is very good in team fights, um, and if they continue to 1-3-1 one, one versus this 5, um, that 5 is just going to mow down any 3 that they put in one lane, and there's just not enough push power to, to counter that. It's going to be very scary, and I think the 1-3-1 one, one might be the route to go, just because their comp really doesn't have a lot of team fight. They need picks, or they need a big ribbon flank onto the Tristana, onto the backline, and maybe that opportunity is going to start to fade. 
And right now, Jack's sitting on the Trinity Force Sphere of Shoujin, actually. It's gonna be rough. And Akao coming in with Counter Strike, but Barco99 is here to answer. Glacial Prison coming out. Akao flashing away immediately. Doesn't want any of that. <laughs> I don't blame him. What's the question? No. Oh my Whoa. god! Whoa! Actually blowing up my C-Man out of a push. And let's not tap actually still looking for this engage. Cosmic Radiance coming down. Slug Slash is so low. Iron Fort Noob though. Caught in the middle of a clusterfuck. That's Miko going over to it. Count. And Barkman 99. This boar is waddling her way out of here. But it's probably not going to be enough. Account. He's leaping. He's slashing. He's dashing. Takedown going over to Account. He's now on a rampage. Oh man, you know, they, uh, really good job from C Van on, uh, uh he's, he's back at it again, he's crazy! It's all why we're down there with the cleanup off of C Van's push play once again. Uh, good C Van just blowing up the Tristana, um, which, you would th which was a heavy amount of the damage that, uh, Lot has. But, you know, at this point, um, now 8-2, and two, the Jax is so fed that he does plenty by himself. Uh, so it is no longer a protected Tristana. It is... They, he, they're, on, they're online. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a very huge fan of the Spear of Chojin second. Not necessarily in general. The Spear of Chojin has seemed to be one of the more meta Jax builds recently. But well, Spear... Spear as, as a fighter who uses his ult to really engage. Uh, Spear of so Shoujin is just so strong on Jax. Yeah, it really is. And especially because it gets on that counter strike up super quickly. That is very key. Especially in this matchup, because as we talked about before, a lot of Rivet's damage coming from auto attacks means that having that counter strike very quickly with that Spear of Shoujin will actually be very crucial when a count starts taking the duels against this Rivet late game. That's right. Speaking of Riven, I'm very surprised to see that we don't see the Death Dance coming out from Riven. I feel like that would be much more effective into this lane, and especially much more than the Ghost Blade. Although I will no kill pressure on Mr. Everest, so it's going to be the Riven flanks into these team fights to start them off, because he's going to have a lot of big damage on Mr. Everest and the likes of Legends of K. Uh, it, it looks like uh, he's got a Vampiric Scepter, so the, he's Probably the next item. Yeah, one would hope. We <laughs> have the Edge Reaver build. Like, Infinity Edge is actually in a pretty good spot right now. It's so good, as a matter of fact, like, even Ribbon Mage is taking edges because it does so much damage. Actually, Dredge Light coming in, though. I4 Dude got in a tough spot, and Cosmic Radiance coming out, but they're gonna get blown up by Sea Vans with Blonde Kill on Eremos, however. Here comes Sir Everett with the cleanup. Legends on tap. Messy corridor fight right now. Zervis jumping the hell out of there. Pantstop had dredge lining out of there. Barkman 9-9 on the front line. Reducer. Threat of hell. Dredge line coming in from Panic Top Hat. It's be a kill going over to Panic. And Slogan Slasha is the next to fall. Kill going over to Legend of K. And C Man on this LeBlanc though. What can he do? Zawarito actually getting a solo kill on the cow and on the bot side. So it's going on. C Man not even close the kill on the Legends though. That was an incredible back and forth fight. Some great trades. Um, some things to take note of, I think. Um, as much damage as uh, Tristana is doing, uh, the damage on C Van is starting to look really disgusting. If he can come online and start melting more people faster, uh, that, that might be a, an avenue for them to win this game. Yeah, so Seaman's actually getting a decent amount of opportunities with double distortions going forward into this game. And more fighting going on, Iron 4 Nuke on the front line. You're gonna be taking extremely low kill. Going over to Sir Everett's in the end, Zawardo though, with the flash forward, Sir Everett's flash healing out of there. Zawardo now caught in a tight spot. Eric Sun going down. He'll go over to Legends Ooh. MK and Seaman. Truly gonna be the next to fall here. Unlucky. Up and auto attack going down. Sir Everett's is on a killing spree. Mountain Drake can go over to Legends on tap as Cal pushing down this middle lane. And uh oh. Uh, and you know that's really great for to see the um the uh, Infernal Drake and the Mountain Drake on a uh, lot. Uh, I would not be surprised if we saw them head towards Baron in, in the not too distant future, uh, because those two Dragon Busts are going to make it really easy for them to take that down. Yeah, they're actually going to shred that. And uh, actually, especially after like the uh, changes to Dragon 
Like, I feel like it was like five patches back, or I think it's at the start of season nine entirely. Something like that. They changed the dragons, and I'm actually a fan of having multiple types of like one different dragon now, because you know you get the pop is slightly less diminished, like it's slightly less effective with multiple dragons that you get. Which don't get me wrong, having multiple infernos, multiple mounds, or something like that, still like having multiples of any dragon is good. But I feel like you can get so much for your team by just having like you know extra damage from the inferno, and then like a lot of extra like, objective damage from one mount, a lot of extra movement speed from a cloud, a lot of extra regen from an ocean. It just feels really effective. It makes your team so much better at everything. That being said, having two of each of Infernal and Mountain, and then one, at least one of the other, if you, ha if you get four dragons, is just, uh, you know, at that point, you don't even need to get kills anymore, you just shred objectives. I think that's actually a fair point. I think that kind of alludes to, to how balanced dragons are currently in their current state, though. Because it's like, you know, it's like good to have different dragons, but it's also it also feels really good to have you know multiples of the same dragon. Yeah. It was. Thank you. Oh. Uh, uh, Men bunk with knowledge. The uh, the. Okay, so Labby, Labby correctly identified Ben Stiller as the Jew I was talking about earlier. For the record, I am Jewish, and I'm allowed to say these things. <laughs> you heard it live, boys. He's Jewish. Oh, well, going to Princeton going live. Account actually got up on the top side, but Cosmic Radiant's coming down. Same fight breaking down. Flux Slasher in the back line here on the South Star. And the entire front line just mobbing down Iron Core. Doom on the side there. So Everett's finalizing the kill. It's Logan Slasher on the lower right side. Of the just Great. Great job on the side of Lot on separating uh, Alistar, which is really their 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 uh, their strongest CC for to, to help protect uh, their carries. Um, and there's just nothing that Alistar could do in that fight, and they were just able to wail on y'all. Not a very fun time. Not a very fun time for this team. I I, I I'm starting to wail on y'all. Does that mean Nautilus is going whale hunting? Oh, speaking of whale hunting. <laughs> <laughs> you wailed it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all probably all missed all of that play by play. <laughs> Yo, you heard of Rebel Yell. What about Rebel Yell? Oh, that is just great. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to say, if I taught us, that we need to uh, cast together more. I'm just saying. Well, that could be right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, the the amount of time it took them to kill that dragon was insanely low. Dude, like I got I got Baron. What did I say? Dragon? I meant Baron. I got one pun finished. Baron. That's how that's how fed this Legends on Tap team is. It right? took them it took them a, a, a period of time of one pun to take down that dragon. And that is not that much time. One pun long. One approximately one pun duration. <laughs> one revolution think, around the pun, if you will. How many puns does it take a an ivern to cross from one side of the jungle to the other side of the jungle? Probably a shun men pun, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> and men bung just made the no oh. Hey, okay. Oh, and they're going in right there. Uh, Slaga Slasha getting caught out. It's going to jump on top. Daisy's been summoned. Sir Everett's and Legends of K gets the kill right there. As <laughs> Akayud and the rest of the squad are pushing down this mid lane with Daisy and Baron Buff. I got to mute you if you're going to eat cackle. <laughs> I'm sorry. For those of you who don't know. No, no, no. no, no. And we're going in right here as they're firing on Bar Barkland 99. Steven trying to flake around. Your moves missing with the stun right there as they continue to pressure down this mid lane turret. As Sir Everts is still pushing right here, getting that pink board right there, gonna take down the second inhibitor of the game while Ak Akiyu is down in that bot lane on the jacks as they're going to be pressuring the third and final inhibitor tower right here and trying to just go around the horn right here. Uh, if you are the side of y'all, y'all gotta make a decision right here, right now. Fight around this inhibitor hey, or you, else. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, you just... Yeah, uh, and then the Cosmic Radiance comes out 
Everyone's going down. Ivern has a double kill for some reason. Uh, C Van's barely gonna get away. Nope, he had a little rocket jump right there. So that's four to zero right there for the side of Legends on Tap as they're gonna close this one out. The only surviving member wow. is Zawarudo who might get flashed on and damaged, but does he die? He's going to also die, but take down Sir Everett's with him, and that's gonna be game one going over to the side of Legends on Tap. What? What a game, and what a show of mod abuse from Menba. I'm free, man, what abuse! <laughs> that, is the, that is mod abuse if I have ever seen it. It's 2019. It's 2019 in the PMA LCS. The correct term is admin abuse. Also, no oh, one heard <laughs> anything because we were. No one heard anything because I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who yeah, knows? The mystery. Then, check the server logs, guys. It's all there. <laughs> wow. Uh, fantastic game on the side of Lot. Just incredible. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, this beautiful game. That was very fun to watch. Just, uh, just a whole lot of damage coming out from uh, this lot squad right now, though. Lot a lot of damage. Lot of damage. Yep, you guessed it. And so, uh, speaking oh. of which, though, MVP vote. Who's the count of you for this game one? You know, I. That's a. I, I have to give it to the Ivor. Um, the Ivern was just always seemed to be, uh, you know, uh, what was that? Um, uh, Legends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Legends on, on Ivern. Uh, you know, uh, where's the, um, had like a, re had just had a fantastic, um, like 30 out of 32, uh, it's almost like a, a 97% <gasps> like what do you call it? Um, kill, thank you. Kill participation. And it's just, I was just... Ivan was always... Didn't do a whole lot of damage, uh, but was just always there. I would give it to the Ivor. Yeah, I agree with that. I tentatively want to give it to Legends of K as well for that spicy Ivan performance. It's already up 30 minions on... Uh... It's actually hilarious. Anyway, Legends MK, really good job on the Ivor, and his pathing was honestly immaculate throughout most of the game. Like, the pathing is very clean. He was up a lot of minions on uh, Barkman 99, and he was just in the right place wherever he was needed pretty much every time. And especially going forward into that mid game, Barkman 99 would just try and gank somewhere, and Legends was already there. He was just chilling. I really have to give very strong honorable mention there to both Account and Sir Everett's that game for a lot of damage done. And just overall very successful play, but for my money, the MPP has got to be Legends. I agree. And especially, um, we, we talked about it earlier in the game with Iron Four Noob and C Van both getting some early kills on their lane um, and you and had, had a chance of snowballing, and it was partly due to legends timely ganks that uh they were not able uh to take that advantage and snowball all right and we are now going to cut the stream for vod purposes and we will be right back with the res actually did have we put an MVP vote in chat yet? Do we have drop poll? Okay, perfect. Drop polls in chat. So we will get back to you guys with the results of the MVP vote next time we arrive on the stream. And thank you, and we will see you guys in a few minutes.